Hi, everyone. Chris Petrie here. Hey, we're doing a beautiful snow scene, a winter landscape. It's the perfect time. It's the cold seasons now in the northern areas of the uh, United States where I live. So we have plenty of snow, plenty of cold weather. I really enjoy it. I grew up all my life in the northeast of the United States. So let's have a fun time. We're going to really enjoy our landscape painting with snow, flurries, figures, mountains, pine trees. We're going to have a great time. Here's the painting. We're going to zoom in on it in just a second. So in essence, you can work from this painting if you want. We'll start out where we're going to show you the exact finished painting. We'll zoom in here. And if you want, you can work from this. So if you just hit pause or you do a screen capture, however you like to work with your uh, watercolors, this is the painting. We have a beautiful scene of distant purple mountains, a gorgeous sunrise or sunset of some really warm colors, cadmium red, cadmium yellow. We have some purple, some ultramarine violet for the distant sunrise or sunset. We have the gorgeous purple ultramarine violet mountains mixed in with some red, some yellow ochres. Then we have our middle distance, our beautiful mountains here in the middle distance, the hills with our burnt umbers and raw umbers, distant trees with our pine trees here, burnt umber, raw sienna, French ultramarine blue, sap green, these beautiful greens and browns and reds in the pine trees, gorgeous figures. We have a couple figures here, three figures, a little child, maybe a couple of um, uh, people walking with the child and they have a dog or walking their little cute puppy dog here. And we're walking out and the beautiful flurries are flying around. You can see the flurries flying all around. Then we have some weeds, some gorgeous snow, cool snow with the cool cerulean blues going across the landscape here. So this is all fun. It's easy to do. You just have to take the steps. Remember to follow each step. Stop and take breaks to let things dry as you're doing your glazing technique. And we're doing a glazing technique here. So I'll leave this picture on for just a few more minutes if you want. And then you can uh, work from this. You can watch the video full through first and then come back to the beginning to use this as your reference photo. Okay, so we're starting up now. We just saw the finished painting. It's a winter scene. We have beautiful snowy fields, brush, grasses, interesting little twigs and things in the snow. It's fun. It's cold. It's snowy. We have some snow flurries just kind of flowing around in the wind. It's kind of windy. It's cold. A nice cold winter scene. You want to have a cup of hot chocolate or coffee with you as you're painting this one. And uh, so we're going to have fun here. Um, let's get started now. Um, let's do our space divisions. We um, Most often when you're doing watercolors, I I'll always kind of in my videos, you'll notice that I try to I try to get the space divisions first. So like if we're working with the rectangle here, we have um, a landscape format. So I'm just going to think out loud here, and I'll kind of just go through my steps of what I do, my progressions. So here I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to do a landscape type scene. So my paper is going to be in a landscape format. So um, we have the landscape format. This paper is probably like a five by seven. So I'm working in kind of a small format. I think it's a little easier on video here to kind of. Uh, focus in on uh, our painting in a, in a 
smaller version, a small composition versus trying to do a large uh, painting. You can do this in large format as well, as large as you like. You can go a full sheet of watercolor paper or maybe an 18 by 24, 12 by 12 by 16. Um, doesn't matter. You can take the same concepts and just enlarge them. So if you're going to do larger paintings, you just have to remember you use larger paper. You're going to use larger brushes. You're going to use probably a larger palette in some cases. If you're working with a full sheet of watercolor paper, um, you know, maybe like 24 by 36, like two, you know, almost two feet by three feet, you know, quite large, 20, you know, or, you know, a, a 18 by 24. If you're working with really large sheets of watercolor paper, you're going to be using really large brushes, a larger palette than this. This palette's more or less for smaller paintings, you know, more smaller compositions, maybe 8 by 12, 5 by 7. We'll give this a little spritz of uh, water. So those are things you, re you try to um, recall, like when you're going to go work larger size paintings, you're just going to be upsizing everything, your palette your brushes, and so forth. So, we will get started here. All right, so for this winter landscape, we're going to do the space divisions. Maybe we'll make the, we'll make it, if this is a third, one-third, two-thirds, and three-thirds, so we'll make it two-thirds, one-third, two-thirds and three-thirds. We'll make it two-thirds land and snow and field. And then one-third up here, we're going to have, um, we'll have the sky. So in essence, you're going to have one-third sky and then one-third and one-third uh, land. Or you could even just say two-thirds land, like so, like that, two-thirds land, one-third sky, like that. Okay. Now, I erase that just so it looks a little better when we're drawing and painting here. It doesn't distract us. So here, let's, uh, let's make the distant hills any old way. Nice flowing mountains, distant mountains. Just like that. And then we'll make that about a small amount of distant mountains, like so. And then maybe we're going to have some trees here. Maybe some more trees here. Like that, and then the field, maybe the field's going to, we'll have some grasses and, and maybe a little bit of earth showing. We're going to have lots of snow though, so we're going to remember we'll have lots of snow, but we're going to have some of the, some of the dirt and grass and weeds and things showing through a little bit, but mostly, mostly snow. Okay, so now this is just the basic sketch that we have. I might try to see if I can get a better... All right, that's a little better. And again, we have the distant hills here.
Okay, so now let's get some wash going. For this, um, let's start off with the sky wash. So we're going to start, start off here high in the sky and let's do some cadmium red. Raw sienna, maybe. We're going to try to do a little more, maybe a touch of yellow ochre. Or have some red. And we'll mix up some purple and blue, cerulean blue. So we'll have some cerulean blue here, some ultramarine violet, Windsor Newton ultramarine violet. Okay, so we have some mixtures here of warm and cool, and uh, maybe a little bit of a little bit of uh, cadmium yellow, and then that red mixture mixed into it just a little bit. So now we have a good variation of colors. Now what we'll do is. We'll just start in, we'll start with our red, and let's just get on some color here. And we can add in some water right into the, let's go right into the mountains, and then we'll take that gold color up top here in the center. So we're going to mix a little bit of the yellow ochre in the center here. And then along the mountain areas, let's go with the purple and the blue. Now the key to this right now is let's get that color right in there quickly. The warm and the cool, the reds and the cool colors, the blue and the purple. Let's get those in right away. We have to get those in quickly and infuse them all together like that to get that really nice sky color. Now we just take the same colors and just ever so lightly bring some of it down into the foreground like this. You don't want to do a lot, just a little bit. Get some of that color in there so that the whole painting has some of that sky color in it. So our snow was going to be mostly white and blue, or it's going to have a bluish tint to it, or tonal value to it. Some blue, some, uh, you know, we'll have that blue color to the snow a little bit. The, uh, but we do want some of that warm color coming down into the snow areas. I tapped up some color with some tissues, so I'm thinking let me make sure I have a nice light feel to everything. Then <clears throat> I'll, I will go in and get some more purple and blue just to put some blue, some blue into the uh, snow areas. And you can see that is very easy. A nice sunset or sunrise, it's your story here. Your story when you're doing your paintings, you can make it a sunrise, you're having a nice sunrise uh, feel. You might be uh, on vacation somewhere in a cabin and you're looking out and you're seeing the sunrise and you're happy and you're on vacation or something. Or maybe it's sunset, you're happy, it's the end of the day, it's vacation. You're, um, you're making up your story as you paint and having a good time. And um, so you're, you're seeing that feel of the warm sky, the sunset or the sunrise. And then there's the cool snow. So you're having lots of blue in the cool snow. So you saw I put that light blue wash on there. Not everywhere. We're leaving some white paper here and there. But you're just getting some blue on there. Light, very light wash of blue. 
And we also took a little bit of that sky color and we put a little bit of the warm sky color in just in a few spots here and there to tie everything all together, to make everything harmonize together, the colors in our painting here, on our beautiful snow landscape. Let's come back because we have to let this dry. Now this is crucial. When you're doing glazing technique, and this is glazing technique, we did our first glazing of a lighter wash all the way across the whole paper. Glazing technique requires everyone, as a watercolor artist, whenever you're working with glazing technique and you're getting that first light wash on, you have to let this dry like 99% of the way. You can walk away, take a half an hour break, let it dry. You can take a blow dryer. You can dry it as well with a blow dryer. That works too. So, but, but just recall when you do that first wash, the paper is going to be very wet. It's going to be very damp. It's going to be buckled. You can see here it's buckled. It's going to be all buckled. It's going to be very wet. You have to let it dry 100% of the way. And then once it's dry, like, you know, you know, 99 to 100% of the way, then we can come back in and start doing our subsequent washes on top of it, our darker uh, washes. All right, so we have that. And let's just take a quick break. And also, too, just before we go, please subscribe. Uh, we do videos like this every week. So don't forget, if you hit that subscribe button below, as well as the notification bell, you'll know exactly when our videos are coming out. And this way you know, hey, another video is coming out. You might want to try it out, paint it. Hey, if it's not the painting for you, well, you can wait for the next one. We always do, you know, multiple videos every week. So we have two, three videos going on every week, everything watercolor. So remember, if you don't see something you like this week, you might, you'll always find something the next week you're going to like. So we're doing all types of uh, subject matter, you name it. Soup, the whole enchilada, soup to nuts, we have it here, watercolor, uh, everything watercolor. So let's let this dry though. Key thing, let our first wash dry completely, then we'll come back and we'll start doing our other washes. All right, we'll be back in just a second. All right, you've made it back and hey, we're back. We're having a great time here. We're doing some beautiful snowy, wintry scenes here. This is the fun of watercolor. You can get all kinds of great effects with watercolor. We're going to do snow. We're going to do some distant trees. We're going to take some titanium white paint and we're going to create some snow flurries at the end of the video. So stick around. Make sure you stay around for the end of the video because we're going to do some beautiful snow flurries. We'll show you how to get snow flurry effects on your painting once you're done doing your uh, main work on your uh, winter scenes. Okay. All right. So we, the first thing we did, obviously you saw, we had the um, first wash on our paper, a nice warm sky with reds, cadmium red, yellow ochre, some purple and blue, cerulean blue in the uh, distant horizon line here. In the sky, we had the beautiful warm colors. We took a, just a touch of the warmer colors, transferred it very lightly in just a few spots here and there on the snow. We have a snowy field in the foreground here in the middle distance. Then we have, we did the um, cerulean blue very lightly. We did just a touch of the cerulean blue on the white paper, but we left lots of white paper here and there to give us that really beautiful bright looking snow. So we didn't want to we didn't want to cover all of the paper with uh, wash. We wanted to leave places where the paper stays pretty much light, pretty white. And you can see we did that in all these sections over here, here, here. The blue you can see here and here, here. The warm colors, the orangey sky here, here here. So now we're going to go over with our darker washes to get our trees, our distant mountains, and our foreground. We'll use a different brush or two as well. So to do our distant mountain, we're going to go with some sap green and purple. Maybe some alizarin crimson too. Let's let's vary our colors. And you just see I'm doing a very light wash. And 
and that's the fun of this. You can mix all your colors as you go. And that's the distant hills, like that. Now, we could take a, a damp brush, so we rinse off our brush. Then maybe we check off a little bit of water on some tissue, just so we don't go too much water. And then we can soften this, this edge here. And that's all it is, is just going along the edge with that soft, damp brush. And that just softens it up a bit. Okay, so we have that distant hill. Now we can start going in. We'll go right into the same mixing area. Burnt umber, sap green, burnt sienna, and uh, French ultramarine blue. Sap green, French ultramarine blue, burn umber, burn sienna, just the darks. Let's get the darks in. And then we can just start putting our darks in like that. And since this is really thick paint, you notice there's no water flowing around. If I lift up my palette and I show you, you can see. See that? There's, n there's no puddles of water in that dark that I'm just mixing now. I'm using stray paint straight paint here. I'm just taking it right from the palette, right to the, right from my paint wells, right to the palette. And there's no water in there, so there's no, you can start fusing in your colors like this. And it looks beautiful. It, it blends in nice. And that's how we, we get that darker dark like this for our next area of hills. And you can just make up your hills as you want. I'm not sticking with any real specific game plan here. Just kind of rolling along the hills just like this. Like that. With that darker mix, which you can see is no water, just straight paint. Burnt umber, French ultramarine blue, burnt sienna. And I, we put a little bit of purple in there too. A, um, ultramarine violet, some green, we had sap green in there too, some greens. Now we can take that same color and just change brushes. We'll use our needlepoint brush like that. Same thing, French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, sap green, burnt sienna, cerulean blue a little bit. And we just flick around our brush like that. We get our trees, distant trees. I think as long as we're doing the up strokes like this, pushing our brush upward, that's always going to give you a great tree effect. You can also do the um, like pine trees or like that. Pine trees are the level branches like so. Then you have a few up and a few go down like that. You can have fun with the trees here and just enjoy, you know, you do some pine trees, you do some happy bushes and things too. Some other trees here that are maybe Just upright trees, but they're not so much pine trees, just other trees here. You take your brush, get some fine trees in the distance. If you want to make some trees in the distance a little bit more distant looking, you add some viridian green and some French ultramarine blue, and those are more in the background. They're more cooler looking, maybe some purple. That would look good in there too, purple.
And there we go. Some interesting tree shapes, and you don't have to go too, you don't have to worry too much. Another pine tree maybe over here with those interesting shapes. More of the straight branches like that. Maybe there's a grove of pine trees here, so you're just going to keep doing the pine tree shapes around here and there. There we go. Sap green, just keep working the same color. Sap green, burnt sienna, burnt sienna, French ultramarine blue. Maybe some more pine trees. And then we make them smaller as they go in the distance. So you can create that illusion of distance here. That's all I'm thinking of is let me create distant feelings of distance here as I, the trees kind of trail off in the distance there. Like they get smaller and smaller. Like that. There we go. Easy as that. No problem. There we go. And it's not a windy day today, so the trees are all kind of standing straight. And maybe there's some bushes on this hill here. And there we have it. We have a, a gorgeous middle distant hill. Then we can start building out closer yet. So we got some more pine trees here. Here. <clears throat> closer to us. So we have French Ultramarine Blue, Burnt Sienna, Sap Green. There we go. And maybe another tree here, next to it, a little bit more sparse. And we'll pretend the light is behind us, so we're not worried about any shadows in this painting. We're just doing the, the main subject in front of us, and the shadows are And a couple shrubs and interesting things. Now we could start mixing in some browns and yellow ochres. But mo mostly darker colors. We want to stick with darks here. We don't want to go with uh, light tonal values. We want to stick with darks. And we could do a dark dark tree here. We'll make this one large. We'll make this a larger pine tree. Let's go for it. Don't worry if you start firing in a beautiful tree. Don't worry about it. This is a big pine tree here. I'll go right here like that. And then this way, see how I, I'm working with things. I'm not stressing. All right, so I know I made some larger tree shapes here and I thought I might but that's no problem don't worry about it if you always remember when you practice these techniques you'll always be in control so that's what I'm going to do this is going to be in the extreme foreground here this one That's all. I'm 
I'm going to just scrub around. Have fun with this. That's the fun of watercolors. We're having fun. We're not stressing over this. So what? If it doesn't come out perfect, we'll, we'll do another one. There we go. A couple will go in the other way. There we go. And that's the... Here we have some... Bottom... Bottom of the tree here we have some... Like that. Some roots. A little bit of splashing. Okay. Okay, that's what it's all about. Having fun. All right, now we'll do a few little. These are get these are picking up the wind a little bit. These are little grasses and things. They're gonna have, they're gonna be even a little bit of wind, a little tiny bit of wind, and these will kind of flow with the wind here. So we're gonna do that. And that's all. All right, so now you can kind of see where I'm just going with the flow here, having a good time. If I see something that is where I might add a little too much paint, well, then I'll make it a larger uh, brush. I'll make it a larger bush or tree or something. I'm not going to worry about it. So here I added too much paint. Well, I'll make it a larger tree right here like that. There we go. We're having fun. We're just firing in the branches and the limbs and the trees. Have fun with this. Don't worry about it. Sometimes there's some thicker branches in here. And I've been using mostly my My needlepoint brush here, and this is and usually our pine trees have branches all the way to the bottom. Not always, but a lot of times they do. Like that. Doesn't that look fantastic? Look at that. We've got snow, pine trees, a distant tree grove, distant mountains, a beautiful sunset or a sunrise, whatever you like. Let's come back. Let's take a break. Let this dry. That's the key, too. And we're going to do some beautiful snow flurries. We'll use our titanium white. You could use Chinese white, um, ivory white. I think there's different watercolors. You know, you can buy gouache you can use maybe. But I find titanium white is my favorite white that I like to use with watercolors. So I'm going to use the titanium white. We'll do some snow uh, flurries in this scene to make it just ultimate looking uh, winter scene with a beautiful snowy field and distant mountains. We'll be right back. And hey, this is a perfect time just to remind you, please subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. You'll, you won't miss out on any of our videos. We have videos coming out every week. We have beautiful paintings like this where we're doing landscapes we do seascapes, we do boat paintings, we do figure painting, we do portraits, we do still life paintings, we do it all here. So everything watercolor, keep coming by. If you don't see something, you, if you see something you like, you go for it, you paint it. If you don't like something, you just wait till the next week or the next video. And this way, if you're subscribed, you'll, you know, you'll see what we have coming out every week. 
you'll be able to paint along with us and learn this uh, beautiful uh, medium of watercolor, okay? All right, I'll be right back and we'll finish up here on this gorgeous snowy scene. Okay, we're finishing up our painting and we're having a great time of it. We're just looking at our pine trees here and we're saying, wow, this looks really great. You know, we have our pine trees here in the foreground and we have um, other pine trees as we go into the middle distance. So our eye can sort of uh, slowly go from one pine tree to the next. Then we kind of have a nice um, bit of uh, interesting information here. These pine trees that keep our attention focused on the central portion of the painting. And then we get to look at the distant hills the distant mountains, the purple mountains, the beautiful sunset, all these great things we can enjoy in this painting. And our attention stays on this because we, we've we created our painting in a way where we're keeping our attention with the darker darks and these large pine trees in the center of the, of the painting. If you can imagine, this is where our focal point is going to be, you know, in these larger trees here. And then we have other stuff. You can see other trees here in the distance and the mountains and that, which looks great too, and over here. But keeping these large areas of large pine trees really keeps our attention focused on that center portion of our painting, which is great. So that's a good key point to remember, keeping our um, uh, subject matter, you know, in the center, near the center of our painting, so that uh, we're not drifting off and focusing on other things besides our rectangle and our painting itself. That's important. Okay, so now let's do a few more final things here. Let's, I'm going to say, let's make some figures here. We'll make some people, a couple people here walking. I'm just going to make a couple figures here. They're walking through the woods. Maybe they have a, they have a puppy dog with them. And they're walking through and having a good time, enjoying the fresh air and the, the beautiful winter time. So I'll start to work my figures a little bit here. I'm going to use red. Maybe this person has a red sweater on or a red coat, nice red jacket. And this other person maybe will make a nice uh, blue, blue jacket. Mix it with some green, blue and green, like that. And then maybe we'll do some. Maybe some yellow ochre for these. So these. And some brown hair, so I'll use some brown paint for the hair. And maybe we have this puppy dog here. And we'll have a little leash here. And we'll make it, you know, a little bit of a shadow. And if your figures are having any issues, you can blot up some paint here and there and maybe the shadows, we don't, maybe we don't need the shadows, maybe it's fine just to we could just leave our figures like that. Maybe there's another figure here, we'll use some raw umber. This a child, maybe a smaller figure here. And we'll make maybe a red hat here. 
All right, so we have some great, we have some beautiful figures in here, enjoying the beautiful winter day. Now we're just gonna go in and we're gonna get our um, white, titanium white paint. We're gonna create some beautiful white flurries. And a couple items to remember if you're gonna do uh, snow flurries. It's probably best to um, clean off a section of the palette. And then we can uh, take a, some white, titanium white, a little bit of water, a little bit of yellow ochre. And there we go. We have some yellow ochre, titanium white. We mix that up a little bit. We add a little bit more water. Fill up our brush with a little bit of, just a touch of water though, not too much. We want to keep the paint thick. That's the key, keeping the paint thick in this to start with. Then we can actually uh, use our other brush. And what we'll do is we'll use one brush to tap our paint on. So we're going to do snow flurries. We're going to tap our paint on with the one brush underneath. The key is we're using thick paint. If the paint's too watery, it's not going to work. It'll just it'll just disappear actually. So to get good flurries, you have to have the thick thick paint so it'll actually um, stay uh, solidified on the paper and it won't um, become uh, diffused and, and kind of get lost within the washes. So that's all you have to remember is good thick paint, use another brush and you tap on. That's the technique, you're tapping on the paint. And we still aren't finished, we have more interesting technique here. This is the first part, getting Getting the thick paint on there first. Just like that, see? Perfect, you have the flurries. Now, to even have more fun, again, thick paint, we don't want, it's gotta be pretty thick, but you wanna add a little water to it. You have to have some water to it, but just a little bit of water. And then, you know, you want to kind of swirl it like this. So you can see my hand, I'm kind of just, that will actually create the feeling of the wind blowing the flurries around actually. So you can put some on, tapping it on with your brush to get the first portion of your flurries and your light snow. And then your other snow, you're going to move your hand around and tap. And as you tap, you want to swirl and kind of move your brush quickly so that you have like that. Just like that. You want to swirl it around and you can go the other direction too, this way. So if you do that back and forth like this, tapping it, you'll actually see it looks really good. It looks like the wind is blowing and the flurries are flying around. And you really get that effect, really strong effect of the beautiful flurries flying around in the wind. And I hope you enjoyed this. We're going to zoom in here. We'll peel the tape off and you will see that it actually looks fantastic when you do that extra little bit of um, uh, movement of the brush to get th that windy feel the of the wind blowing the flurries around. If you just tap them on straight, like th the first uh, process we did, that's fine. That gives you the feeling of flurries, no question. But when you start to swish and swing your brush around and tap on that other layer of flurries and snow, it really makes it um, realistic. It really feels, you, you see it actually in the painting. And I'll prove that to you. I will show you a close up and you can see how it looks. You'll really get that beautiful snow effect.
that blizzard effect, the wintry blizzards. You're going to have your hot chocolate and coffee. You look out the window and say, wow, I'm glad I'm inside here looking out the window at that stuff. You might want to run out quick too and enjoy it for a few minutes. And then hurry back inside. So here, let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, there it is. The finished painting. I hope you really enjoyed this and you can see all of those flurries kind of drifting around, flowing around. And uh, it's a fun painting. I hope you'll try it two, three times. Sometimes it takes a couple times to get the different steps done in the painting. At first you're going to be trying to really get that distant mountain and middle distant mountains completed and hills. And uh, then you can get your pine trees kind of going where you can get those really looking good. Kind of just free flowing. You just use your uh, needlepoint brush as a really big help when you're doing your pine trees. You can get those really nice beautiful detailed lines and then of course your flurries your flurries are last those are a lot of fun have fun with this enjoy i hope you enjoyed this video and again subscribe this way you get my videos you'll be coming back week after week learning more watercolor videos and learning more watercolor techniques and processes you'll become a better watercolor artist and better painter and i promise you that and uh, we'll see you on the next video talk to you soon